when you think of Australia, you might think of kangaroos, koalas, or premium Australian beer, like Foster's Lager. Sorry, Aussies. But another thing you might think of is the distinct Australian way, or ways, of speaking English. The story of Australian English begins with the arrival of European settlers in Australia in 1788. Convicts from Britain and Ireland were exiled to New South Wales, which was founded as an overseas penal colony. They weren't all ruthless criminals, mind you. Many of them were only guilty of theft, and some of them were children. Over 160,000 convicts were sent there over the next 80 years, mainly working-class people from the major cities of England as well as Scotland, Wales, and Ireland. There were also many free settlers who joined them. The significance of this is that people speaking different English dialects from all over Britain and Ireland were essentially thrown together in the same place, where they had to learn to understand one another. Remember, back then there was no radio or television to familiarize people with different accents. In order to understand each other well, they had to learn to speak in a way that was less regional. This resulted in dialect leveling. Dialectal variations were removed from their speech. You could say that the core of Australian English is a compromise between the various regional dialects of Britain and Ireland, and since then, Australian English has developed its own features, words, and expressions. It has also been influenced by additional waves of immigration since the days of the penal colony ended. There are basically three varieties of Australian English. Broad, general, and cultivated Australian English. They essentially form an accent continuum, with the speaker's accent depending mostly on whether they grew up in a rural area or an urban area, their socioeconomic background, and perhaps the kind of subculture they identify with. Broad Australian English has the features that people outside of Australia tend to associate with Australian English. You know, when they think of Steve Irwin, the crocodile hunter, or maybe Paul Hogan and Crocodile Dundee. And just a word of warning, Australians never say this. Throw another shrimp on the barbie. Unless they're taking the piss out of you. Taking the piss. Is an expression used in Britain and Australia that means to make fun of someone or mess with them. It's not used in North American English. I'm Canadian and I sometimes use it, but that's because I've picked it up from some Aussie friends of mine. Here are a few examples of broad Australian English that you'll probably only hear in rural areas, or maybe amongst older people, or amongst, um... Is it politically correct to say ockers and bogans? Yeah, nah. Does that mean no? Nah, yeah. Women are sometimes referred to as Sheilas. Somehow that one particular name, Sheila, came to represent women in general. For example, if I say, Hey man, where's Liam? In theory, I might get this reply. Uh, he's over there having a chat with some Sheila. Struth, she's a bit of a looker. Struth is used as an interjection to show surprise. It actually originated in the UK and is a contraction of God's truth, but now it's used much more in Australia. Struth. Well, at least in broad Australian English. A similar word is... Crikey. This is also used as an interjection to show surprise. But again, this is limited to broad Australian English. Unless someone's taken the piss. Taking the piss. Cultivated Australian English is spoken by less than 10% of Aussies. Non-Aussies might mistake it for British received pronunciation. It has many fewer obviously Australian features. General Australian English is spoken by the majority of Aussies, and is somewhere between the two. These different varieties of Australian English are not regional. For the most part, it's hard to tell the difference between people from Brisbane, Melbourne, Sydney, and other cities based on their accents. Some people also argue that there's a fourth accent, the accent of the outer suburbs of major cities, which developed among communities that have immigrated to Australia since the Second World War. This kind of accent is often perceived as an immigrant accent, though it's spoken among the children and grandchildren of immigrants, and crosses ethnic boundaries in those neighborhoods. Most of the examples after this point in the video will be more or less general Australian English. Spelling. Australian English normally follows British spelling conventions, rather than American. That means, in words like organize and authorize, the ISE spelling is normally preferred to the IZE spelling. Words like color and flavor are spelled with O-U-R rather than O-R. Words like center and liter are spelled with R-E rather than E-R. And so on. The reason why American English uses different spellings from British English is because of Noah Webster, whose dictionary published in 1828 chose certain variant spellings to be the American ones, in order to make American English distinct. This was specific to the US, so it didn't affect Australia. Pronunciation. 
Australian accents are R-less accents, or non-rhotic accents, meaning that the R sound is not pronounced at the end of a syllable or word, unless there's a word beginning with a vowel after it. This is the same as in most accents of England. For example, care. Compare that to my rhotic Canadian accent, care. Care. I don't care. I don't care. Different accents of English are mainly distinguished by differences in vowels, and that's the case with Australian English. For instance, Aussie English basically has two A sounds, A and A. Some words are pronounced with A in both Australian and North American English. For example, cat. Cat. Nap. Nap. But other words that I would pronounce with an A sound are often pronounced differently, with a long A in Australian English. For example, bath. Bath. Laugh. Laugh. This is because of a split that occurred in the early modern English vowel a. In southern England, the sound began to change to a long a sound, as in father, before certain sounds. This is referred to as broad a. This change made its way to Australia, but the vowel became a central vowel rather than a back vowel a. Bath. Rather than the British word bath. This distinction is not used across the board in Australian English, though. It has the most influence in South Australia. The most noticeable feature of Australian English pronunciation is probably its diphthongs. An Australian greeting I'm sure you've heard is G'day or G'day, mate. It's really only Aussies who use this as a greeting, but if I tried to say it, it would sound like Good day, mate. Listen to the difference in the diphthongs, the vowel sounds. Good day. G'day. Mate. Mate. The word day is not to be confused with the word die. Die. The equivalent of American and British I is I. For example, price. Price. Hide. Hide. There's also a different Australian pronunciation of the diphthong that I would pronounce as ow. Australians say something like ow. How. How. Downtown. Downtown. There's also a diphthong that I pronounce as oi. Australians say something more like oi. Boy. Boy. The Aussie sound is less open. Another is the diphthong o, as in boat. Australians say boat. There are some characteristic features of intonation in Australian English. One such feature is called high rising terminal. This means that Australians often say clauses within a statement with intonation that rises at the end, like a yes or no question in North American or British English. In the following example, you can hear it at the end of the first clause. Uh, met Robbo down the park. Um, then we met up with a couple of mates and uh, played a bit of footy. This kind of intonation is standard in Australia. These days you might hear it sometimes in North America and the UK as well, though a lot of people find it annoying. You might hear it referred to as up talk. Vocabulary. While the vast, vast majority of Australian English vocabulary is the same as in other varieties, it does have its own word preferences, as well as words and expressions that are uniquely Aussie. The most famous Aussie phrase just might be G'day mate, as we heard before. Just like in the UK, Aussies often refer to friends as mates. As in the UK, the word mate is used in contexts where North Americans would say friend, or maybe man when addressing someone casually. But unlike in the UK, in Australia, mate is not limited to casual situations or to your peers. You can use it with older people or people with a higher rank or position than you. This reflects the overwhelmingly casual nature of Aussies and the way they communicate. To inquire about someone's well-being, you might hear them ask, Hey, yeah. As a North American, this sounds strange to my ears. We ask, how's it going, rather than how are you going? Similarly, when you apologize, an Aussie might say, you're right. Rather than, that's all right, which is what I would say. The first time I heard this, I was confused. Like, why are you telling me I'm all right? Another expression that's likely to confuse us North Americans is... She'll be right, mate. Who's she referring to? Well, no one. It's referring to the situation. I would say, it'll be all right, or it'll be fine. When Aussies want to get someone's attention, you might hear them say... Oi. I would say, hey, instead. Oi, mate. Hey, man. Fair dinkum. Or just dinkum. This expression means genuine, honest, or true. It can also be used as a question. Fair dinkum. For real? And it can be used as an adjective to describe someone. He's a fair dinkum Aussie. This is like saying, he's a true Aussie. I've come across a couple of possible etymologies of this expression. One of them states that it comes from a dialectal word of England, dinkum, meaning hard work. 
Another etymology states that it comes from Cantonese, which was spoken by prospectors in the early gold mines. Dingam, meaning real gold, though I tend to think the first etymology is the correct one. Remember that sentence from a moment ago? He's a fair dingam Aussie. Well, we could expand that a little. He's a fair dingam true blue Aussie. Mate. I might say, he's a real genuine Aussie. True blue. This phrase is kind of like fair dinkum, meaning true, as in genuine, but also has the meaning of loyal. And to all the people with that positive personality trait, I say, Good on ya. Good on ya is what Aussies say when they want to show they're impressed or they respect something good you've done. I would probably say, nice work or good job. From what I understand, good on ya comes from Hiberno English, that is, Irish English. Note that good on ya can be used both sincerely and sarcastically. For example, let's say I'm bragging about how much of a pimp I am and how I scored last night. Yeah, right, I mate. Good on you. When you say thanks, an Aussie might reply with, No worries. Which is like saying no problem or don't worry about it. No worries can also be used in response to an apology. No worries is a way of life in Australia and something of a national motto. Aussies tend to be light-hearted and not take things too seriously, but if you're one of those people who tends to complain or sulk, or if you're easily offended, you might be called a Sook. Or as an adjective, Sooky. Aussies love to use diminutive words, special forms of words that show endearment. This is usually done through shortening a word and adding a special suffix to it. Afternoon becomes Arvo. This afternoon becomes This Arvo. Or Savo. Barbecue becomes Barbie. Mosquito becomes Mozzie. Football becomes Footy. Cigarette becomes Siggy. Sandwich becomes Sanger. Postman becomes Posty. Garbage man becomes Garbo. Christmas becomes Chrissy. Chocolate biscuit. Chocky Bicky. Service station becomes Servo. And that's for a service station meaning a gas station or petrol station. McDonald's becomes Maccas. And this is ubiquitous throughout Australia. Isolation becomes ISO. As in quarantine due to COVID-19. How'd you go during ISO? There are also some words in Aussie English that originate in Aboriginal languages of Australia. One example you might hear, in particular in broad Australian English, is hard yakka, which means hard work. Yakka is a word from the Yagara language, which used to be spoken in the Brisbane region. This word made its way into Australian English through the English-based pidgin language that was originally used between European settlers and aboriginals. That pidgin later developed into Australian Creole, which is still spoken by around 20,000 people today in the Northern Territory. There are some other well-known nouns that represent specific things in the Australian environment, like dingo or boomerang, which come from the extinct Darug language, which used to be spoken in the Sydney area. Australian English is largely the same as other varieties of English, but with their own accents, vocabulary, and attitude that reflect the laid-back nature of Aussies. Endearing and friendly are two words that come to mind when I think of Aussies and their way of speaking English. Oh, one final feature of Australian English that we can get into is their extremely liberal use of the word Though YouTube might ban me if I talk about that, so maybe I should just move on to the question of the day. For speakers of Aussie English, I'm sure there are heaps of Aussie words and expressions that I didn't have time to mention in the video. So what other ones would you like to add? Write them in the comments down below. And this is the part of the video when I say thanks to my Patreon patrons, especially my top tier patrons whose names appear on the screen. Becoming a member on Patreon gives you various benefits like early releases, ad-free and promotion-free videos, and access to a patrons-only online community. Check out patreon.com slash langfocus for more information. And to everyone, thank you for watching and... Have a good one.